Uh, we got awesome game. Awesome game was the Steelers Ravens. Steelers are currently leading the AFC North after beating the Ravens. Do you feel like they're for real? And how do you feel that division shakes out? Now, again, Bears bias. Uh, for the listeners, you're going to have a lot of University of Michigan bias for me as well. I'll try and keep that under wraps. So they definitely, in my opinion, upgraded at the quarterback position once Russell Wilson took over. They, as far as passing the ball, look better. It seems to make Najee Harris look better. Are they a contender? No, and it's a bit uh, premature maybe to segue into what we'll talk about with the Vikings, but I would consider the Steelers to be the AFC version of the Steelers. Kind of a bit of an, uh, sorry, of the Vikings. An overinflated record. There's good. They have a fantastic head coach who in crunch time, I don't know who else you'd really want. Um, but there's just something about them. I don't trust them, the Steelers that is. Um, I'm trying to get the um, statistics from their secondary. They actually have a very, very good secondary regarding, or as per my favorite statistic, that's EPA per DB, expected points added per dropback. They're actually good. But for me, it feels like the Steelers' secondary is something that could help them fail. I mean, their front seven is really good. They have one of the best pass rushers in the entire world. But outside of that, I mean, I don't trust them, especially yeah, compared to the Ravens. Gotcha. I'm looking at that where you're bringing up. They have they're 21st ranked in sacks, which is not very high considering what they are defensively considered to be. Um, if your if your DBs and your linebackers are playing that hard, I think without the consistency of a pass rush, you're not going to see that translate very much into the playoffs. Kind of like to support your point. Never heard that comparison before, by far at all. Um, love it. Vikings and Steelers are basically clones of each other in each division and each conference, even with the piecemeal quarterback that's kind of on a budget and just executing game plans with talent. Um, I think Sam Darnold has it a little bit easier in terms of personnel and stuff like that. Uh, I think he has an easier it, job it, to pull it's off. It's debatable. This is going to be a bit of a reach, so I apologize. It's not weird or like flat out wrong to say that um, the number two receiver for the Vikings, Jordan Addison, He's not far and away worse than George Pickens. And after George Pickens mm -hmm. on the Steelers, what do they have at wide receiver? I genuinely can't name you their number two. It's he's he's It'd the guy who took Fryer a quick slam. Pat, um, oh boy, it's not they. They got rid of Deontay Johnson. Um, yeah, boy, there there was a guy who used to play for the Rams who's on the team. Calvin now. Austin. Holy cow! Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, that's Calvin Austin and. Uh... Their, their top receivers are George Pickens, then Fryer Muth with 295 yards, Calvin Austin with 276, and Najee Harris is their fourth leading receiver. So to support I did, your I point, did see that's that George Pickens crazy. is in the top five. If you're playing, if you're big in the Madden, George Pickens is going to have uh, the first ever 100 rating for spectacular catch. You got to give it to him. Mm -hmm. But again, he's just like a classic Steelers wide receiver, walking case of CTE, waiting to explode. So let him have his <laughs> fun. And once he gets his contract extension, it's going to be. All hands on deck. Yeah, Mike Tomlin's going to have his, have his uh, hands full with another another brain case to kind of just fight through between Antonio Brown to and trade away to Bell, the Bears yeah. for the 33rd overall pick. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised by it. But, uh, yeah, and then I forget Chase Claypool was there too. What a head case as well there. Yeah, I mean, to kind of answer that question, I don't know if they're for real. They are for real in the sense that they are 8-2, and two, and I feel like they're a legitimate 8-2. and two. They have matched yeah. up with some some actual tough teams and beaten them by the skin of their teeth. Will that carry over? I don't know to like to kind of bring that up. Um, I never liked the Bengals this year. I still don't like the Bengals. I don't think they're a good team. Um, I didn't see them being a good team going into this year. My biggest issue with the Bengals was Joe Burrow's wrist, which kind of has a he has proven himself that it was not going to be as big of an issue as the season progressed. Um, and going into next year, guess what? I'm not going to be hating on the Bengals that much because. I know that Joe Burrow's there and he's healthy, but Joe Burrow's out. That team is out of this division race and it's not really going to be an issue. I don't want to hear any more people tell me that the Bengals can sneak into the playoffs anymore. I don't care. Don't tell me they're going to do no. it anymore. Mr. Harbaugh put that right to bed. We'll get to that no. in a little bit. No. And then, um, you know, the, the Ravens I feel are the same way. You don't trust the Steelers for some reason. I just don't trust the Ravens and I want to Lamar so Jackson? badly. Not not as far as a passer of the football, but just in the grand scheme. And I know Peyton Manning has two Super Bowls, but it feels like Lamar Jackson is that type of player where he's this 
iconic MVP dominant force in the regular season. Oh, here's the the playoffs. I got I got to hide. Yeah. So he needs to prove it. If he wins a Super Bowl, I'll still be skeptical. As stupid as that would sound, but he he has probably the perfect storm to try and win it again like how we talked about the chiefs are kind of starting to fall off the bills they aren't as strong as maybe they even were last year even though the quarterback's playing fantastic the ravens if they don't win the super bowl or get to it what what's the excuse so yeah i think the ravens end up coming out of that division as the best team and the division winner frankly i just think that they're just yeah. more consistent as a regular season team i've drawn a lot of parallels because i was grow, grow i grew up and i was raised on like the 2010s football I always say uh, my comparison was Dak Prescott is this generation's Philip Rivers. All right. And then uh, I think like how you're saying, I think Lamar is kind of like this generation's Peyton Manning. I think he's going to be cooking for 10 years. He might win one and it might be just like, he's going to be matched up with the Eagles and just Jalen hurts just shits his pants or something like along those lines. Right. So um, uh, yeah, I think they're going to end up winning. Do I think that they're going to carry too far into the playoffs? My ideal situation is a Baltimore Buffalo an AFC championship just because I, I do like Kansas city. I just don't think that it's their year. And if they three Pete or sniff a three Pete, man, uh, I'm not big on referee interference or conspiracies or anything like that, but this team is just not good enough to be one of those top two, three teams in the AFC. So I'm going to call bullshit if they kind of carry their, their dead bodies into the AFC championship this year. 